TakeAndTalkPicks.com. I'm Rob Kruger, and this is episode 84 with our Fundamental Fridays. So, Photo World, today I'd like to talk to you about focal length. It can be extremely complex if we want to get into it, and I'm going to touch upon certain things, but I'm going to give you the basics. Uh, there are two basic things to know about focal length as far as choosing a lens. You have a lens that would be a variable focal length, like this 24-70 f2.8 from Nikon, and then you have prime lenses, where they would be one specific focal length that you cannot use any sort of zoom. It's you having to move back and forth. That would be the only reason they'd get closer in or further away from your scene. And those prime lenses vary for sure, but today I brought my 50 millimeter f1.4. Uh, this thing is a beast for being such a small little lens. I love it. So I'm going to get into this a little bit with you, Photo World, and kind of walk through what it is that focal length is doing for you and how it changes. Now, I'm on a full frame camera, so the millimeters on my lens are exactly what I am going to get on the sensor. If you have a Nikon and it's a cropped factor sensor, say a D7200 or the 5300, some sort of a more intro level camera, and right now I'm actually using a 7100 which has that crop factor going on. And what it does is that is a smaller sensor size, which means the millimeters on your lens aren't quite what they say. You have the crop factor happening where it gives you a portion of what that lens is giving you, so it has a automatic zoom in happening on the sensor. For Nikon it's a 1.5 time crop factor, for Canon it's a 1.6. I think it's actually a kind of a cool feature when you're looking to get a little bit more reach on a longer lens, you're going to get more on those crop sensors because it's actually cropping in from the space of the lens itself. So for Nikon, if you're using a 70 to 200 and I zoom all the way in, it's actually being a 300 millimeter lens on one of those crop DX sensor cameras, which is kind of cool, you know? But then you go wide like my 14 to 24 and 14 on an FX sensor, this full frame here, is incredibly large in comparison to that crop factor. So they both have good and bad things as far as what the focal length is going to do. There are other reasons to choose a crop sensor or a full frame uh, such as depth of field or noise, but there are several things to consider. But for the lenses, I don't know. It's kind of fun to have that extra reach, but it's kind of also fun to have that really wide true angle. So. Back to our film days and our FX style here, I'm going to be talking as if the millimeters on here are doing what they are for the camera, which is full frame, just like 35 millimeter film used to do. Uh, so that's the terms I'll be talking in since I'm using a full frame camera. Right now I'm using my 24 to 70, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a shot here. we got a beautiful scenery, and you can't really see it in the video because it's so compressed with that longer lens I got on there. But I'm going to take a shot over here, and at 24 millimeters, we're going to get a scene beautiful all right so a little bit happening we got some texture in the sky and uh we got a cool looking tree over here so we, we have some interesting things happening and that's 24 millimeters i get a little bit of that water some open space and this is just pointing and shooting from here i'm going to go to a very standard number that a lot of you intro photographers are going to find that you're being sold on for a prime lens would be 35 and the reason is for that crop factor on the smaller sensor that 35 but 35 in its full frame glory is a little bit wider than that normal field of view for the human eye and here's what 35 looks like with that same kind of situation there we go so now we're zoomed in only 11 more millimeters uh, and it's crop it's cropping out that tree mostly and we're losing some on the left side there we're taking it down from the sky I tried to keep the horizon at a similar height and uh, it looks all right there so I'm gonna go to what we call our standard field of view here of 50 millimeters. That's why for full frame you'll want to get a 50, and 50 is good because it's the human eye without the peripherals. So 50 millimeter, my view from here, just cropping out the peripherals, gives me this. So now we're even closer in with that 50 millimeter. And what that does, it's like I said, the human eye without the peripherals. It's hard to even imagine because we can see so much more with our eyes, so it's hard to realize that that 50 actually is the same distance and feeling because when we go wide it's as if we got further back or you know opened up to see more 
and if you do 50 it really is from here to there and the, without the peripherals we lose that tree the tree on the right side of the image here you know it's totally gone we don't have it uh, like the 24 millimeter I'll bring that back and yeah I mean you can see it it's great we got a little bit more and I love wide for landscapes most landscape photographers would tell you go wide you know because you want to get as much of that scenery as possible and I'm just gonna go to my max on this lens which is 70 millimeters it gives me a little bit more reach past what I can see with my own human eyes here so just trying to frame that up grabbing at similar horizons we're losing so much there. We lose almost all the water running by there in that river. And, uh, you know, kind of a, still a little bit of those tree line and some sky. It, it can be boring for this particular scenario. But when you're talking about a portrait, that little extra reach is nice. So you can distance yourself from your subject. And I'm actually going to switch over. This is my variable focal length here. And these are just different readings on the lens. 24, 28, 35, 50, and 70. But the truth is... I have from 24 all the way up to 70 every single millimeter option there is on that range. So this is quite a lot of lenses mixed into one. And it's a, it's a fast lens. It's got an f2.8 aperture. That's still pretty good. But we get really, really fast lenses when we start doing prime because we have enough to build in not having a factor of moving elements uh, other than the focusing elements maybe. And we end up being able to open up even further and I'm going to transition over to my f1.4 50 millimeter from Nikon here. So now that I have the 50 on here, I've just eliminated all my other options. I don't have 24 anymore. I can't go wide. I can't do anything if I want to get that little extra reach at 70. I'm stuck at 50. But what can I do with this that's a little bit different? Well, one, people are going to tell you, and I agree, you're never going to see something as sharp in a zoom lens that you do in a prime lens. So if I set my zoom lens to 50 millimeters and I go at f2.8, which is its best open aperture uh, for most amount of light and you know, shallow depth of field, all these great little things going on, and I set this thing to 2.8, it's going to be incredibly sharper in that area, in that focal plane. It's going to be so much sharper. And the reason being, when you open up all the way, or when you close down all the way, you are bending the light in such a weird way and so much that it actually creates problems around the edge, focusing issues, that it ends up being a little bit soft, okay? So you get to that sweet spot. For a lens that's 2.8, the sweet spot's going to be like f8, and you're going to have some really nice clarity in there. When you have something as open as f1.4, we're talking about a sweet spot of f5.6. So now, if we're closer to our sweet spot with that 2.8 comparison on the 50 millimeter prime than the 2.8 over here on our zoom lens with the 24 to 70, then we're doing a lot better getting closer to that sweet spot and therefore sharper at 2.8, even though it's the same aperture, we're getting a lot sharper at 2.8. So let me just go ahead and shoot at 2.8 with my 50, see if I can find a little interesting subject matter to make that shallow depth of field worthwhile. So I just stepped to the side and I got this blade of grass here, or this grass coming up out of the other grass all around it just kind of stood out to me so I took a shot of it and I'm at 2.8 yeah we got this really crisp clear subject I mean that is pretty darn sharp and because we're closer to that sweet spot but that 2.8 allows for a nice shallow depth of field now I'm going to take this over to f1.4 for you that totally max open aperture and we're going to hit that same subject the best I can with the wind here and uh, make it look as similar as possible but we're going to see a, a little bit of a difference in that shallow depth of field so pretty much the same shot here, but let's look at that first one with the f2.8 and just pay attention to the background as I switch over to the f1.4 shot. Here we go. And see that there's a subtle difference. It's actually quite noticeable, but there's a difference in the background where it creams it up even more. It gets a little bit more blurry on that f1.4 because that shallow depth of field is really, really coming closer in since we've gone to now two stops more open. It's crazy. All right, so f1.4 is a beauty of a prime lens. They make 85 millimeters with f1.4. Canon makes an f1.2 for their 85 or another 85 option. There are 2.0. Zeiss made 1.0. There's so many different max opening for aperture when it comes to prime lenses, where you go to those variable focal lengths with zoom lenses, you have some pretty standard stuff of starting at 2.8 or having an f4 lens all the way through or it might be variable by zooming and you have a 3.5 at 18 millimeters and then you zoom into 55 and it goes to 5.6 
or even the 18 to 200 lens. There's so many different lenses out there and the apertures that go with it. So what am I getting at with focal length? Well, you want to determine what kind of field of view you might want to have with your lenses. What kind of quality in the aperture you might want to have with your lenses and get the mix of them or start making your decisions on that. For me, I didn't buy prime lenses at first. I know many people who do though. I ended up going for zoom lenses so I had a little bit more range with what I was doing. Then I moved into the prime lenses to make sure I had that aperture option. So Photo World, comment below and tell me what kind of lenses you like. Are you into the variable zoom lenses? Are you into the prime lenses? What's your favorite aperture to shoot at? If you could have any one lens you want, what would it be? First pick out of the box, what would you go with? I'm Rob Kruger, TakeAndTalkPicks.com. Thank you for showing up for another Fundamental Fridays. I will see you next time and happy shooting. <laughs>